Imagine a world of intrigue, power, and struggle, where an empire teetered on the edge of change. In the late 19th century, one man stood at the helm, facing unprecedented challenges and shaping history. Welcome back, history enthusiasts, to Turkic Tales. Today, we are thrilled to embark on a captivating exploration of the life and legacy of Sultan Abdul Hamid II. Born on September 21, 1842 in Istanbul, Abdul Hamid would ascend to the throne in 1876, facing a tumultuous era for the Ottoman Empire. Join us as we delve into the remarkable story of this influential figure who shaped the destiny of the Turkic people. Without further ado, let our journey through time commence on Turkic tales. Abdul Hamid II, born on September 21, 1842 in Istanbul, was the son of Sultan Abdul Majid I and Tirimujgan Kadin. After his mother's death, he was adopted by his father's legal wife, Perestu Kadin. Growing up, Abdul Hamid II shared a household with his half-sister Semil Sultan, who was also adopted by Perestu. Unlike his predecessors, Abdul Hamid II had the opportunity to travel to distant countries. Nine years before his reign, he accompanied his uncle Sultan Abdul Aziz on a journey to Paris, London, Vienna, and several other European cities in the summer of 1867. This experience exposed him to different cultures and political landscapes, influencing his approach to governance and diplomacy. In 1876, Abdul Hamid II became the 34th Sultan of the Ottoman Empire, taking the throne during a challenging period marked by territorial losses and nationalist uprisings. Despite the obstacles he faced, his early experiences and upbringing would play a role in shaping his reign. Abdul Hamid II was skilled in carpentry and personally crafted furniture. He had an interest in opera and translated opera classics into Ottoman Turkish. He hosted renowned European performers at the Opera House of Yildiz Palace. He was also a wrestling enthusiast, organizing tournaments and inviting wrestlers to the palace. Abdul Hamid was a talented drawer and had a fondness for Sherlock Holmes novels, even awarding Sir Arthur Conan Doyle with an order. Abdul Hamid II practiced traditional Islamic Sufism and was influenced by Libyan Sheikh Muhammad Zafir al-Madani. He attended the Sheikh's lessons in disguise and invited him to Istanbul after ascending the throne. The Sultan initiated Sufi gatherings of remembrance and maintained a close relationship with the Sheikh for 30 years. He established a Sufi lodge for the Madani order of Shadhili Sufism in Istanbul, showing his devotion to spirituality. Abdul Hamid II ascended to the throne on August 31, 1876, following the deposition of his brother Murad. Despite the anticipation for liberal reforms, Abdul Hamid II faced a difficult and critical period for the Ottoman Empire. The empire was plagued by economic and political turmoil, local conflicts in the Balkans, and the imminent Russo-Turkish War between 1877 and 1878. These challenges prompted Abdul Hamid II to adopt a different approach to governance, focusing on preserving the empire's stability and his own political power. If I do not serve, I will be held responsible and abominably hated in the presence of Allah and history, he emphasized, highlighting the consequences of his actions or inactions. Abdul Hamid II collaborated with the Young Ottomans, a group seeking constitutional arrangements to introduce a new form of governance. In December 1876, he promulgated a constitution and established a parliament. Led by Midhat Pasha, the commission tasked with creating the constitution aimed to incorporate Islamic arguments for a liberal transition. The constitution granted the Sultan the authority to exile perceived threats and established a bicameral legislature with the Sultan making appointments. Abdul Hamid II's fears materialized when, as he famously stated, war doesn't just happen on the borders, war is the total fire of a nation. If this integrity is not achieved, victory is accidental defeat, is destiny. The Ottoman Empire faced a significant defeat when Russia declared war on them in April 1877. This led to the signing of the Treaty of San Stefano in February 1878, which imposed harsh terms on the empire, 
including territorial losses and granting independence to Romania, Serbia, and Montenegro. The empire also underwent significant reforms in Bosnia and Herzegovina as a result. Following the Treaty of San Stefano, Russia's increased influence in southeastern Europe raised concerns among the great powers, particularly the United Kingdom. As a result, the Congress of Berlin revised the treaty to reduce Russia's advantages. In exchange, Cyprus was ceded to British control in 1878. Troubles in Egypt, exacerbated by Abdul Hamid II's mishandling of relations with Urabi Pasha, led to British intervention, ultimately granting Britain de facto control over Egypt and Sudan. These territories remained under nominal Ottoman rule until 1914, when Britain officially annexed them in response to Ottoman involvement in World War I. Abdul Hamid II's distrust for reformist admirals led to the locking of the Ottoman fleet, resulting in the loss of overseas territories and islands in North Africa, the Mediterranean Sea, and the Aegean Sea. Financial difficulties forced him to allow foreign control over the Ottoman national debt, impacting the empire's financial autonomy. Additionally, the union of Bulgaria with Eastern Rumelia posed a threat, and issues with the Albanian, Greek, and Montenegrin frontiers strained relations with European powers. Abdul Hamid II's reign witnessed a shift towards conservatism, despite initial expectations. While consolidating power at Yildiz Palace and reducing ministerial roles, he prioritized education. We stand up both as a nation and as a state, he declared. Istanbul University and a comprehensive network of secondary, primary, and military schools were established to counter foreign influence and uphold Ottoman identity and Islamic values. Additionally, he restructured the Ministry of Justice and enhanced transportation and communication infrastructure, bolstering the empire's reach. Sultan Abdul Hamid II played a role in the American takeover of the Moro Rebellion in the Philippines. He sent a letter to the Moros of the Sulu Sultanate, instructing them to cooperate with the Americans. The Sultan's letter, requested by the American Secretary of State John Hay, convinced the Sulu Muslims to submit to American suzerainty. This collaboration between the American military and the Sulu Sultanate was facilitated by the Ottoman Sultan's influence. Despite Abdul Hamid's pan-Islamic ideology, he chose to avoid hostilities between the West and Muslims. Abdul Hamid II sought Germany's friendship due to strained relations with France and Great Britain. The German Emperor, Kaiser Wilhelm II, visited Istanbul twice and hosted Abdul Hamid. German officers were employed to reorganize the Ottoman army, and German government officials helped restructure the Ottoman government's finances. Germany also obtained concessions, such as the construction of the Berlin-Baghdad Railway. Kaiser Wilhelm II even requested the Sultan's assistance in dealing with Chinese Muslim troops during the Boxer Rebellion. The Young Turk Revolution, led by the Committee of Union and Progress CUP, posed a significant challenge to Abdul Hamid's rule. The revolution was fueled by national humiliation, resentment in the army towards palace spies, and the Macedonian conflict. In the face of troops marching on Istanbul, Abdul Hamid capitulated and announced the restoration of the suspended constitution of 1876. The revolution led to the opening of the Ottoman parliament, with Abdul Hamid acknowledging the need for education before its reinstatement. He was the sultan during the time of the creation of the Zionist movement by Theodore Herzl in 1896. In 1901, in response to Herzl's request for Palestine, it was narrated that Sultan Abdul Hamid told Herzl's messenger, While I am alive, I would rather push a sword into my body than see the land of Palestine cut and given away from the Islamic Caliphate. He was even offered a lot of money. He rejected the offer, saying, I will not sell a single inch of the country because it is not mine, it belongs to all the Muslims. They paid for this empire with their blood and we will redeem it with our blood. Let the Jews keep their millions. If the empire is partitioned, they can get Palestine for free, but that will happen over our dead bodies. Herzl himself visited the Sultan and reiterated the offer, to which Sultan replied, 
Even you paid me the weight of the earth in gold, I would never agree. I would never bring shame upon Muslims. If you want to buy Palestine, know that the price is the blood of all the Muslims. I have no enemies, other than the enemies of Islam and the Muslims. Realizing that leaving the Sultan in power was not good for the Jews, and seeing him as a hindrance in way of their plans and goals, Herzl allied with Freemasons, the Siyup party, and with European leaders to topple Abdul Hamid. Sultan Abdul Hamid II was the last of the Ottoman Sultans who had any real power. He was overthrown in 1909 by a group known as the Young Turks. In 1909, Sultan Abdul Hamid II was overthrown as the result of a military coup orchestrated by the Young Turk movement, ending his 33 years long reign. In the next 10 years following his abdication, the Ottoman Empire was torn apart. He ruled the Ottoman Empire at a time when the Muslim world was falling into the hands of non-Muslims. By his efforts, he delayed it for 30 years. Abdul Hamid II was the last Muslim ruler to hold Makkah, Medina, and Jerusalem at once. He died on the 10th of February, 1918. With the Balfour Declaration in 1917, the British supported a Jewish state, and after the defeat of the Ottoman Empire in 1918, Palestine was occupied by the British. The Jewish settlement increased, and Arab land ownership decreased. By 1948, the majority of Palestine's population was Jewish, leading to the establishment of the State of Israel. Sultan Abdul Hamid II's view gained renewed recognition, and he remains respected in Arab countries. Thanks for joining us on Turkic Tales as we explored the life of Sultan Abdul Hamid II. Stay tuned for more captivating episodes as we dive into history. Like, subscribe, and share your thoughts below.